Are you tired of being lied to? In this video, we're gonna dive deep into the world of getting anyone to confess to anything. Whether you're a parent trying to find out if your teenager's been sneaking the car out at night, or maybe you're a business owner trying to find out if you have an employee that's stealing from you, maybe you work in human resources and you're conducting a workplace investigation, or maybe you're in law enforcement. These three powerful tips will help you get closer to get anyone to tell you the truth. Now at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip involving a strategy you should absolutely avoid. This is a mistake I see from even the most seasoned investigators. So you need to stay with me until the end to ensure you don't mess this up. One of the key elements in getting someone to confess is to create a sense of connection and openness. This is why removing physical barriers such as a table can make a significant difference. Sitting next to or across from your interviewee without a desk or a table in between helps establish a more personal and intimate atmosphere. Now, I don't mean the intimacy that's gonna get you fired at work, I mean the intimacy that allows rapport and building connection. If you think about some of the podcasters or talk show hosts out there that you listen to, right? Joe Rogan, Jocko, Howard Stern, Oprah Winfrey, they all have one thing in common. They're interviewing a guest with the hopes of getting information from them. Essentially, that's what your job's going to be. But Oprah Winfrey does something different than other talk show hosts. She has the ability to get people to open up and share their deepest secrets on national television. Now I've seen guests on her show open up, break down and cry while telling everything. There are many reasons why she has this ability, but one of the reasons for this is because when she interviews people, there are no barriers, nothing in between her and her guest. This allows for that intimacy needed to get information from people that don't normally feel comfortable giving things up. If you're talking to an employee that you suspect of stealing, rather than sitting across a desk, simply sit in front of them or next to them. You'll be surprised at how much more they open up to you. Remember, by eliminating the barriers, you're breaking down walls and building a bridge towards the truth. So Hollywood might show an interrogation in a dark room with a light shining in a suspect's face while being berated by an interrogator as being the norm. This style of truth seeking will almost always fail. The most successful interviewers show empathy and rationalized behavior. Instead of choosing and arguing guilt versus non-guilt or lie versus truth, try understanding the interviewee's perspective. In my career, I've conducted thousands of interviews. And one thing that I've learned is that empathy is probably the most powerful tool to establish trust and create a safe space for a confession. Saying things like, I understand, or I can certainly see why, these sort of things allow the other person to feel understood and comfortable to open up. Remember, you don't have to approve or agree with the behavior, but arguing, bickering, accusing, and pointing fingers creates a negative environment that makes it very difficult to get to the truth. Now, it doesn't stop with empathy. Rather than accuse, rationalize the behavior. By rationalizing behavior, you demonstrate that you're willing to understand their motivation, circumstances, and their thought processes. Remember, there's a reason why people do what they do. There's a reason why your employee may have stolen cash. Perhaps they're experiencing money problems at home or struggling to pay bills. There's a reason why your teenager might be getting into trouble at school. Perhaps it's peer pressure from their friends. There's a reason why someone might have fibbed on their resume. Perhaps it's the competitive job market, not allowing their lack of experience to get them the job they want. In all of the above examples, I've essentially made an excuse for the other person. Making excuses is natural. So why not use this strategy to your advantage? This approach reduces defensiveness and encourages the interviewee to open up. It's all about putting yourself in their shoes, rationalizing their behavior, and creating an environment where they feel understood. When you're conducting an interview or trying to get someone to confess, it's crucial to remain calm and composed. Remember, emotions can cloud your judgment and hinder your effective communication. It's important to maintain a neutral tone and keep your emotions in check. This is one of the reasons why it's so difficult for a spouse to get a confession from their cheating spouse. It's because it's nearly impossible to stay calm when your emotions are running that high. As a former homicide detective, I had to learn to separate myself from the cases I was working so that I could keep my emotions out of the interrogation room. This was especially difficult in some cases, especially those involving crime against children. By staying grounded, you create a comfortable and non-confrontational environment for the interviewee, which is extremely important. This will encourage someone to open up and share more willingly. At the beginning of the video, I said I would show you a strategy commonly used by investigators that you should absolutely avoid. I have made this mistake for many years. I recently read a book teaching the common person how to get people to stop lying to them and how to get confessions. And one of the suggestions they use was to lie about evidence. 
This is one of the worst things that you can do. Remember, if you lie about the evidence or any aspect of your investigation and you get caught, you have ruined any credibility that you had with the person you're speaking with. And you'll never get that back. All your trust is gone. This is a mistake that I made several times during the earlier part of my career. To be honest, it worked quite well and quite often, but unfortunately on a very big case, I got caught lying about the evidence. I was never able to establish a connection with that person again. Eventually I lost. Regardless what anybody tells you, no matter what books you've read or what videos you've watched or what courses you may have taken, lying about the evidence is a very bad idea. I've been teaching interview and interrogation for many years, and during my training, I often stress the importance of not lying about the evidence. I truly believe if you use some of the strategies that we went over and you're honest during your interview, you can form a better connection and ultimately get one step closer to the truth with anybody.